They say this is one of the oldest city in Indonesia, 14 centuries of history, make for some unique heritage that is still alive to this day. Welcome to Palembang. Come see the beauty only on Sea Indonesia. What's the first thing you think about when you hear Palembang City? Could it be this? It's everywhere in town from street vendors to all-out restaurants. Here in this street though, everybody sells this one thing. You can even smell it from here. <laughs> oh yes, this is the beloved Pempe. Fish cakes that beats Palembang on its every bite. Hmm, doesn't sound quite appealing when you call it fish cakes, but trust us, this is one delight you don't want to miss. Breakfast, lunch, dinner, or anything in between, a pempe will literally be waiting right outside the doorstep in Palembang. But nowhere are they more lively than at this road at downtown Palembang. Enter Mujahideen Ilir 26th Street, or should I say, Pempeville. Now this is the street of a thousand pempe, not only because there's so many of them selling the same thing, but because many of them only sell it for one thou. <laughs> there are dozens of stalls here, branching off even to the narrow streets, selling pempe of every kind. One of them even have a table-sized menu. <laughs> No need to call for a menu, it's right here on the table. <laughs> Not wasting any time, I went straight to it. It's like Pempe prime time, look at it. People just keep coming and they come home carrying these boxes of Pempe ready for a flight anywhere. Wow! In a flash, our orders came straight from the kitchen. Alright, it's almost like you can do anything with the pempe. Let's start with the classic. This is mixed pempe. You got the boiled one there, fried, and also skinned pempe. Look at that. That's awesome. Now, this one's unique. I've never seen this one. This is grilled pempe. You just grill it over fire. It looks awesome. This is another classic. Kapal Salam, or the submarine. Apparently they call it that because they dip it in water. Mmm, yum. This, you make into a soup. A soup broth called Teh Wan. Mmm, yum. Then this one, Lenjer Panggang. You mix it with eggs and you grill it. Doesn't that look yummy? Mmm. -hmm. And what makes any pempe a winner is, of course, its chukko. Mmm, vinegar. That makes it spicy and strong. Yummy. Let's start with the classic, the boiled pempe. Sip it in there. <laughs> Ooh, we got a winner there. It tastes so fresh and the texture is so soft. Oh, I love that. Next up, fried one. Same one but fried. I always like the fried one better. Mmm, top notch, guys. This one is the fish skin pempe. Oh, that is so good. Oh yeah, guys. Let's try the grilled one. I've never tried the grilled one. Oh, look at that. The texture is so nice. Here we go. Mmm. It's more dough-like. 
still very good. I like that. Next up, let me try the that one. Make it into a fish broth. Mmm. Now that's a freshening one. I like that broth. Mmm. Right, guys, I'm not gonna turn this into a mukbang, so I'm gonna try them one by one. <laughs> oh man, that was good. Historians have found it difficult to pinpoint when pempe came about. Textbooks mention pempe as a household food known formerly as kelasan. That references to the mixing of the dough by way of dikles. But it's not until the 1910s that it started being sold as snacks by Chinese descendants. People used to call Ape Ape the uncle who would sell these pempes and it became pempe. You gotta love the Indonesian phonetics. <laughs> I wondered, with so many pempe brands, how does one stay relevant? Kalau bisa enak itu, bahan bakunya harus fresh dulu. Dari jenis ikannya, dari bahan baku, semuanya harus fresh. That's Arifin, a pempe restaurateur who's more than happy to show us how real pempe is made. So it all starts off with fish. That's blended, seasoned, and mixed with tapioca flour to make a dough. This shop would go through 100 kilos of tangiri fish or wahoo fish in a day. Others may use snakehead fish, Asian knife fish, or red snappers. Then it's shaping time. Smaller balls make the typical pempe. Lengthened ones make lenjer. Kapal salam is shaped in a ball, then egg makes its filling. Into boiling they go. Two times for every batch, and it's done. And the spicy vinegary chuko sauce? Well, that's a mix of vinegar, obviously, garlic, salt, and palm sugar. Yes, its dark tone comes from the palm sugar. Voila! Pempe is more than just an industry. It's a proud identity of South Sumatrans. And for that, Pempe is officially given a national heritage status since 2014. So whenever you find yourself with a dish of Pempe, that's a piece of culture right there. Kalau bosan enggak? Karena setiap pagi pasti makanannya Pempe. Throughout its history, Islam has emerged as the dominant religion that has shaped today's Palembang. The Grand Mosque stands to cherish all of the region's diverse past. This is one place where Palembang's ethnic heritage is fused in one structure. Welcome to Palembang's Grand Mosque! Enter the Sultan Mahmud Badaruddin Jayo Wikramo Mosque. Built by the first leader of Palembang Sultanate in 1738, this soon-to-be four centuries old structure features quirks that reflects the people's diversity. The roof is built with layers to reflect that of Javanese Hindu temples. The hexagonal minaret mirrors Chinese temples. And of course, with a touch of gold, Palembang's proud color. See how they use the touches of gold on the roofs there? It makes it really stand out. It's beautiful. When the sundown looms, it's time to do a prayer. and the interior really struck me. This design was so unique at the time, it inspired the design of other mosques, such as the Grand Mosque of Demak in central Java. These are such intricate details how they made it at that time. Mm -hmm. 
and Palembang is not short of Muslim heritages. Today, the city has a new icon that is just as inspiring. At Gandus district is a place that embraces Islam's holiest scripture. Welcome to Bait Al-Quran Al-Akbar, the largest Al-Quran in the world. You're looking at 630 pages of the Holy Quran of 30 Jews or sections, carved on a 1.7 by 1.4 meter pieces of wood. It is so huge that it's even heavy to move this. This is wood that is conjoined here to make one page of the Quran. The wood is from a tambesu tree, one of South Sumatra's strongest wood that's comparable to Java's teak. They are carved by local carpenters, with each first doused in bright gold. It is such an intricate design. I'm so blessed to see this. It's the brainchild of one Sofwatilah Mozaib, a local legislator and Islamic teacher. When it opened in 2012, Al-Quran Al-Akbar is an instant hit in town. Al-Baqarah, the longest surah in the Quran. It starts right here. If you think this is done, no. A lot of work is still being done, as you can still see around here. Many workers are trying hard to put all of these panels on the walls. Even when plans are still in place to make this larger, Al-Quran Al-Akbar is already record-breaking. In 2018, the Museum of Indonesian Records or MURI have awarded this the largest and heaviest wooden Al-Quran in the world. Today, this place attracts thousands of domestic and international worshippers alike each day, making it a prominent religious tourism site in Palembang. Entrance is 20,000 rupiah or $1.40 per person, and it's open for people of every faith. For me, rest assured, I went home with a blessing. When we talk about Palembang, one word echoes in every corner of the city, Sriwijaya. That refers to the old kingdom that emerged in the 7th century and became one of the largest naval power in Southeast Asia with its capital right here in Palembang. And to embrace that heritage, we've got this Palembang special for you. This is the Gending Sriwijaya Dance, or the Rhythm of Sriwijaya. A sacred ode to the glory of that past kingdom, made into a cultural welcoming performance. There are nine dancers here, to represent Sembilan Batanghari, or the nine territories of South Sumatra. Its choreography reflects Buddhist values, inspired from release from the Borobudur Temple in central Java, that was believed to be built around the time of the Sriwijaya's reign. The center dancer carries a casket to present a battle leap within it, as a gesture of modesty. The performance was actually made during the occupation of Japan in Indonesia. It was performed for the first time in 1942 for guests of the Japanese authority, but has carried on today as a South Sumatran heritage. And also a striking feature of the dance is the bride costume called the Aesan Gede. Pulau ini sendiri disebut dengan Suana Dwipa atau Pulau Emas. Meet Febri, the man on a mission to preserve South Sumatran heritages. Jadi karena itu gemerlapnya emas itu melambangkan Sriwijaya. Nah kemudian warna merah 
Manggis itu itu warna Palembang. Maknanya kejujuran. And those colors surely can't get more South Sumatran when wearing their traditional attire, the songket. For Febri, the songket is more than just an identity. Itu artinya secara filosofi bahwa songket adalah atau menunjukkan peradaban tinggi masyarakat Palembang dengan berbagai macam motif. We went to check out one of Palembang's many songket manufacturers and boy are these fabrics eye-watering. That's a massive collection. Wow. So colorful. There are many interpretations as to where the name Songket came about. One common understanding is it came from the Malayu word Sungkit, meaning weaving threads. Limited inscriptions show Songket have existed since the Sriwijaya Kingdom era. The period of Palembang Sultanate replaced Buddhist themed motifs with Islamic values. Today, it's a cultural identity. Making it is a task that requires much patience. This is Fikri Collection, a fifth-generation Songket manufacturer who still sticks to the old ways of weaving by hand. Let's go through the process. Cotton or silk threads is spun into bobbins. This will be used for the weft or the crosswise threads of the cloth. Another set is used for the warp or the lengthwise threads. This is systematically loaded on the loom called kedokan. The bobbins are placed in the shuttle, then weaving begins. Now, what makes it a signature songket is the golden threads right here that is being weaved right at this very cloth. You see, this makes a very strong striking color that you can see from far away. Now, this is a very complex process that could take weeks, even up to a month. With 20 weavers, this workshop completes about one piece of songket every day. Now, all of that hard work comes down to these beautiful pieces of songket. Look at those details, so shining. Yang ini motif apa, Kak? Okay, harganya? Two and a half million for a whole set. It doesn't come cheap, all that hard work. And then it gets more expensive even in other collections. Nah, yang ini apa kak? In motifnya? Motifnya pulir. Motifnya pulir. Harganya? Seven and a half million. Look at it. It's more intricately detailed. Look at that bright colors. And then there's a whole other level of songket yang ini kak ya, yang koleksi. So these ones, they don't produce anymore. They get them from a village somewhere which is very old. Umurnya berapa kak? Wow, so it can be from 50 years to even a century old and they don't make these anymore. Apparently, these are real gold. Ini mas asli? Uh, yeah. Katanya gitu ya, Kak. <laughs> so they say the original ones are actual gold and it might not be as shining as the modern ones, but this is what they used to look like. And it's my turn to have a go at the South Sumatran look. Aha, how does it look on me? Ah, pretty awesome, right? This song that is called the Bintang Beranta. You can see it from the stars right there. And it is so complex in bright red. I feel like royalty. Hmm. <laughs> how about it? And that's our intimate look at Palembang's much cherished heritages. This city has caught on me scouring over historical textbooks because its story goes so deep. Suffice to say, I come home intrigued. See you guys on our next trip. Mm -hmm.